Yo, today we are cranking out the ultimate white rapper tier list, man. It's your boy DJ T Stomp. And you might already be asking, white rapper tier list, why are you deciding on this? Simple reasons. I'm qualified, right? As a predominantly white, I do got some black in me, you know, somewhere around that quarter mark, you know, man from the Virgin Islands. I think I am qualified to speak on these rappers, right? I know quite a bit, you know, I know a decent amount about hip hop, right? Been listening a long time. I've seen how the game goes. Why not give an opinion on them? You know, this should be the ultimate list. This is 60 something rappers. It should have everybody on it. And yeah, we, we have this tier list right here and we're just gonna go through everybody and, you know, give an opinion. Now, this should have everybody. If somebody's not on this that you would like to see the opinion of, do two things. One, double check the rapper's actually white because they might be something else. And two, if they're not on that list, just write their name in the comments. I'll respond to it in a short or something if it's an actual rapper. Um, But yeah, now how am I actually gonna rank them? That's a pretty good question. Now, I'm gonna use things such as their sales. You know, you can't be the greatest rapper ever if you've never sold a record. The CD dropped the next week. Sound scans say he ain't sold shit. Magnificent was all up. <laughs> you know, your actual like technical rapping skills. So, you know, your beat selection, you know, your cadence, your ability to, you know, write good bars, shit like that. The swagger, you know, does this artist got that Southern swag or some respectable drip? And then lastly, does hip hop embrace this person? Is this like a pop star that raps sometimes? Does the culture mess with them? All of these metrics are what I'm going to use to, you know, rate these rappers. Now, before we get into this, please go ahead and hit the like button and comment as well. As you can see, I'm effed up right now. I'm drinking Diet Dr. Thunder. A lot of you guys have never had to mess with Dr. Thunder. Most of you guys got Dr. Pepper in your household. I can't say the same for myself. I'm trying to blow this channel up. So please hit the like button, comment. Let's get into it. Timestamps for every rapper in the description. Let's go. All right, so we have all of the white rappers in front of us. Um, should be a little more than this. Got it in presentation mode. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and crank this out one by one. This is, I believe, 64 rappers let's get into it first off we got lush one lush one is a better commentator than he is a rapper <sighs> man he's gonna be a c tier because i'm gonna be honest big battle rapper big in the battle rap community no jumper not a great rapper <laughs> but you know he embraces the culture he's dope i'd be down to do content with him lush one if you see this please hit me up but now lush I would say definitely been around seeing the game, but you know, rapping ability, this is, we're rating the rappers here. He's just not very good, right? All right, next up, looks like we got R.A. the Rugged Man. Now, if you don't know R.A. the Rugged Man, he came out in the early 2000s. You know, he was kind of the same time Eminem was blowing up, you know what I mean? You know, similar kind of lyrical feel. I mean, that was the early 2000s, but at the end of the day he was a very good artist but you have to understand eminem was blowing up at that same time and eminem was going to get all of that glory um and Ari the rugged man just couldn't compete he didn't have the beat selection he didn't have dre he wasn't that good he wasn't nearly as talented i mean he was dope but eminem basically blew him out in all categories and there was only there was only space for one white boy at the time so that's kind of what happened to him um in terms of whether or not he's still putting out projects to be blunt i don't know all right next up we got v nasty now v nasty i'm gonna put her as a b tier i don't know if you remember v nasty but do you remember when that like mall streetwear era was kind of the thing it was like you would see like you know last kings dope hatch truck fit a lot of that skater clothes was like really really popping like 2010 through 13 ish that's when v nasty came out you know she was a west coast white girl rapper who she was very polarized well, i want to say she was polarized and she got a lot of heat because she did say the n-word a lot but she did have somewhat of a career 
but what really makes her a b tier to me uh, she's just she, she can't be an a because she just did not see the commercial success for an a or an s tier she can't be an a um for that reason but the reason she's dope to me is because she did a collab album with gucci Mane, right you can look it up. He has, she has a collab album with Gucci Mane, which the fact that she pulled that off was really dope. And this is not like, you know, new fit, happy Gucci. This is like angry street leaned out Gucci. All right, next up we have Lil Dicky. Lil Dicky is an A tier. Why? Because Lil Dicky is a really good rapper. Um, made, has tons of great hits, you know. Um, I don't remember what his first week sales were off the top of my head, but I'm sure they were decent. They're better than anybody else on this list that I have so far. Lil Dicky, really, really dope. Um, he was a comedy rapper, did his thing. And the thing is, too, like, he stuck in his lane, you know? He didn't try to be street. He didn't try to be nothing that he's not. He did straight jokes. It was like, I don't really want to compare him to Lil B because that was like a complete different style of comedy. But it was like funny edgy rap that was still good and listenable and then on top of that when you talk about technical skills little dicky can rap he can do all of that stuff like he's got great freestyles um andy mineo i think like in terms of rapping and actual music it's pretty decent um but the thing is like i'm just being honest he's a christian rapper um and we all know like outside of lecrae even lecrae's heights i don't remember what his sales would look like you know being a christian rapper it, it's it's kind of hard to dominate on the mainstream when you make religious music um so that kind of holds him back in terms of the sales aspect but like i think he's the he's he's not amazing in terms of rapping to me but he's pretty solid <sighs> we'll move him up to b tier we can't we can't have him c tier and then have um be nasty in front of them slim jesus a tier okay slim jesus was a pioneer there's a lot of people talking gangsta nowadays that you know don't live that life but slim jesus walked so all of those people could run if that makes sense i don't know if you remember slim jesus but um back in like 2014 ish he was this white kid from i believe it was frank block in some part of Ohio. I don't remember what part of Ohio he was from, but he really embraced the drill thing, right? He had on the true religions, the ripped jeans, the Air Force Ones, and he did a music video called Drill Time. It was a drill song. He was talking reckless. He had hella goons behind him. He was pistol toting, you know, really portraying that image. And he blew up. Everybody was like, whoa, Slim Jesus, this white kid rapping just like Chief Keef. A lot of those Chicago drill rappers at the time embraced him, reposted him, but he got in a lot of trouble because he, um, if I can remember, there was like a Vlad interview where he sits down with a Sprite and then he just talks about like, yo, I rap about this stuff, and, but I don't live it. And as you know, hip hop at the time was a lot more authentic than it is now, just to be honest. Everybody was checking him. Everybody was hating on him. And he his career slowed down a lot. Um, but nah, Slim Jesus, I put him as an A tier for one, he was a pioneer. And two, his music was actually really, really good. Um, because Drill Time was a good song. And then it was like four or five years later, the new hot thing to do was Who Run It challenges, you know, Three Six Mafias Who Run It, and then uh, Take Hey The Race. And Slim Jesus, if, if I can remember, I think he had the best he had, of one of those two remixes, he had the best one. I can't remember which one. It's been a while now. But now Slim Jesus, he's a pioneer and he's really good. I put him as an A tier. All right, next up, we got Millie's. Now, Millie's is an up and coming Boston rapper who is super dope to me. I did get to see him live in person when he came to St. Petersburg on the Joyner Lucas tour. Huge fan of Millie's, man. I love his music. He's got the swag. Hip hop embraces him. He's signed to, you know, Jada Kiss. Um, you know, he makes that pain music kind of comparable to like, honestly, ah, not Rod Wave. I, I know rappers hate being compared to other rappers, but to put it bluntly, he basically just makes pain music. That's what his thing is. And he's kind of like down that gangster route, you know? Um, 
yeah that's millie's super dope really like his music i don't really know what else to say um not corny at all um ah man i want to put him at a like he could be an a the thing is he would be an a but in my eyes he's only one hit away from being an a tier that's the thing he doesn't have any real big hits like he has a song with al b al he's got songs with fabio um dave east but because he doesn't have a big hit i can't put him at a tier i'm just gonna have to put him at b tier next up we have blp kosher and blp kosher is another artist that i've seen live in st petersburg at the same venue that i saw millie's blp kosher up and coming florida rapper that's super cool he's all he's in that new florida drill wave you know like it's funny so florida rap um there's a lot of up and coming florida rappers you know Lil tyler boston richie wiz Haven, boss man d lo steve c stunna etc etc he's kind of a part of that wave i wish he collaborated with the other guys more but he sonically is like them a lot in that uh you know he raps on those detroit beats um I don't know to me blp kosher is pretty authentic um i really like his music um and i'm gonna put him as an a tier above millie's even though they're both equally as dope the only reason i put kosher above millie's as an a tier is just because he has bigger hits you know with um special k and whatnot and albums that i think have streamed a little bit better but millie's you are just one hit away from being an A tier. I really want to put you there because I'm a big fan of you. All right, Action Bronson. I'm going to put him, we'll say A tier. He's a New York rapper that I think is really, really good. Um, he had that song with Rocky back in the day. Uh, he did music with, um, who else did he do songs with? I'm trying to remember. Um uh i think chance the rapper i think he had a couple records with chance the rapper i mean i'm i'm mentioning the people he collabed with but he has his own music uh he did his own thing i feel like his main run maybe i'm tripping you know somebody remind me because maybe it was like 2012 through 15 ish i don't know i'm putting him aids here but you know what i just don't to be honest with you i don't remember a lot like I haven't listened to him in a long time. I'm going to put him B tier just because I feel like I haven't... Like, I know he has that show that everybody watches and whatnot. We're just putting him B tier. I, I can't put him A tier because I just really can't remember too much about his music. All right. Aesop Rock gets a B tier just because, you know, once again, doesn't really have the commercial hits. Um, you know, rapping well on boom bap beats and making like actual hit songs is like two different beasts. And I feel like I, I haven't heard anything really from him in a very long time. So he's a B tier. We got the Suicide Boys. Now the Suicide Boys are definitely A tier. Um, these guys were, I don't want to say pioneers, but we all remember the SoundCloud wave, you know, 2015 through 18, maybe 19. You could like maybe add, or, add a year or two to that on both ends. But these guys were really, really early in that SoundCloud wave. Um, I don't know. I think they're super duper dope. I think they're they're authentic. They stand out um, in terms of their come up. They were really, really big on embracing, emb embracing that three six mafia juicy J sound. Um, yeah, Suicide Boys. I think they had a project like. I used to bump heavily called called like I want to die in New Orleans. This was many years ago, um, but they're super dope. All right, Lomabu, he's going to be our first D tier. And I don't even say that hating. I just don't get it in that. We talked about Slim Jesus earlier. Slim Jesus walked so Lomabu could run. But the thing with Lomabu to me is that he doesn't have like, I feel like real hit songs that people really love because they think the song is dope. He's just good at going viral off the, oh, I'm this white kid, but I'm gonna embrace this drill sound. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, he's like a less authentic Slim Jesus almost. Like, I don't know, everything is always like, it, it's like, it's too heavy on a gimmick. It's like, okay, I'm gonna do a song with, with uh, 
Blueface's girl, Krishan, like I'm gonna do, you know, all of these antics and things instead of making like real hit music that, you know, like people play at a party, people actually know. And maybe, maybe his music is popping like that, but I'm, I'm just gonna be honest, I really haven't heard or seen it outside of the context of, oh, I'm scrolling through my Instagram feed and, you know, a promo post was bought on one of these rap pages for like, you know, a, a gimmicky video that he's dropping, you know? Sorry, man. All right, next up, we got The Lonely Island, man. The Lonely Island, they were some OG YouTube meme rappers, man. But they they did hella numbers and they had songs with like some pretty established people. They had songs with T-Pain, um, Nicki Minaj. Who else did they, Akon. I wanna say they did a song with maybe Sean Kingston, maybe. Maybe not Sean Kingston, but that first three I named they did records with. They were also kind of this YouTube meme rappy type of group. You know what I mean? But they were actually really dope. They had original music, good beat selection. The raps were good. I messed with them. You know what I mean? But the reason they're B tier, B tier, despite this respect, despite this success, instead of A or S tier was, I don't know. I feel like they had a come up, but they weren't like, you know, hip hop embraced, right? You wouldn't be driving through Atlanta, Miami, New York City, Los Angeles, and really see that their music being played out of people's speakers and whatnot. It, it would, they were more in that YouTube meme crowd, you know? But they were dope nonetheless. I just, they were rapping, but I wouldn't say they were like a big piece of hip hop culture. So we're, we're putting them B tier. All right, Bones. Bones was another, oh, I need to, I need to stop putting people B tier, but Bones, Bones was another early SoundCloud person. I remember he used to be like, I feel like people used to kind of compare him to Young Lean a bit, but no, he was kind of, you know, an edgy early SoundCloud rapper, basically. Shout out Bones. Um, I, I'm like, I, I acknowledge his impact. A lot of people that listen to him, his music was just personally a little bit too edgy to me, but yeah, that's about it. All right, next up, we got Bubba Sparks. Now, Bubba Sparks was, if I'm not mistaken, kind of like a one-hit-ish wonder, mid-2000s white rapper, you know? He had, like, he was, like, it was weird. He was, like, a country-ish rapper, but at times, he also had that, like, slim thug look. You get what I'm saying? Um, But, yeah, Bubba Sparks just didn't really have enough of a career to warrant being on top of past the C tier, so... Next up, we got Chanel West Coast, right? Now, we're rating people on being a rapper. Chanel West Coast, to my knowledge, has never really seen any real musical success despite being a rapper, right? She embraces that like hip hop look, you know, with the drip, the jewelry, things like that. But I know her from her shows on MTV with Rob Deerdick. Uh, I know she was on Ridiculousness. If I'm not mistaken, she used to pop in on Robin Big or maybe it was Fantasy Factory. You know, she was adjacent to that. You know what I mean? But I never really knew her for having hit songs or anything like that. Um, so we're going to put her as a C. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just throw a D tier. I'm not I'm not hating, but I'm just being honest. Like, I don't really know her for much. Eminem. Do I, of course he's an S tier. Do I even have to explain? Oh, my face cam might be blocking it. But as you can see, Eminem right here, I'm putting him as an S tier. Eminem is the GOAT, okay? And I'm not even glazing. I don't even really bump Eminem that much. But let's be real. We, we know for the majority of the rappers on this list, Eminem is their son. Uh... Yeah, Eminem, I'm not, I'm not, do I, I do I really got to sit here and waste time explaining why Eminem is an S tier white person, well, white rapper? No, all right. We're just gonna move on because you should know the answer to that. Next up, we got Fergie, good old black eyed peas Fergie. Now, once again, we're rating people based on, you know, this is a rapper's list, right? Fergie, she could rap, but she wasn't really a rapper like that. She saw some commercial success, but wasn't really a rapper rapper like that. And for that reason, we put her as a C tier. All right, next up on this list, we have a legendary 
meme rapper. We got Mr. Krispy Kreme 2012, man. I am the baddest rapper of them all, right? Funny enough, I discovered this man through Tosh.0 back in like 2012, right? He was a uh, pretty uh, notable on YouTube at the time for basically kind of just mocking. Well, I don't want to say mocking, but he was memeing Atlanta street rap at the time, right? You know, the Gucci mains and the OJ to juice mans and those guys. He kind of made comparable music. He would rap on these Lex Luger sounding beats and he would just be like kind of parody rapping saying a bunch of unbelievable stuff, talking about his firearms and whatnot, but it was like an obvious joke, you know what I mean? He was a meme rapper. He's gonna be, <sighs> as legendary as that meme was, we're gonna have to put him C tier. Next up we have G-Eazy, man. We all know G-Eazy and G-Eazy gets to be an A tier because G-Eazy had one hell of a run back in like uh, 2015 through 19-ish, g Easy was pumping out hits left and right. Um, of course he had his own hits, I mean it. Then he had, you know, he was, he, he had like song with like Tiger and Rich the Kid. Like g Easy had a run. g Easy was doing big tours, but I don't know what it was. Somewhere around COVID, everybody just completely forgot about him. I think he tried doing some like experimental album and yeah, he just hasn't been the same since, but G easy gets an a because one, he sold really well. You know, he had actual technical skills. He can really rap. He was able to freestyle, you know, made sonically good sounding music. He had the swag to him and hip hop was embracing him. You know, he had songs with all the big artists. Like, you know, G easy was like a respected, respected rapper. Um, yeah, so there there we go, G Easy. You get it you get to be an A tier just off 2015 through 19 alone. I ain't even considering your last four years. Next up, we have NF. Now NF is a rapper I have not listened to too much myself. I do know he kind of got his start in the game as like a Christian rapper. I think he was like he went on tour with Logic and whatnot. But I'm not gonna put him as A tier. I put him as B tier off the strength of one he sold really really well you know what i mean but he does also kind of suffer from that effect that a lot of white rappers suffer from and that like they have a community of people that listen to but the community of people that listen to him listen to hip-hop but he's kind of one of the only few hip-hop artists that they listen to right that's not everybody but there's a lot of like white rappers like that where even eminem suffered from that right there's a ton of white people out there that listen to rap music, but Eminem is the only rapper that they listen to of that, right? Um, ask anybody like reasonable about hip hop, they'll tell you that, you know? Next up, we have Hoodie Allen, right? Hoodie Allen, this was somebody who like 2013, 14-ish was like popping on, I'm not, I don't even want to put the YouTube word out. He was just popping in general. Um, not too much radio hits, but he made the type of music that like, if a white girl went on vacation and then she compiled all the clips into a little montage, Hoodie Allen music would be playing in the background. That's kind of who he made music for. We're gonna put him. <sighs> I can't decide if I'm pulling him B or C tier. I'm gonna be generous and I'm gonna put him B tier. But no, Hoodie Allen, if I'm, I don't think he had any like real commercial hits. It was just kind of like underground niche rap ish music. That's what he was. All right, next up, we got Riff Raff, A tier. Tiptoeing in my jaw, dense mother, that the foreign, you put the, the. I can't cuss on this, I'm trying to keep it clean. Riff Raff, man. Riff Raff was always dope to me. When he came out, I remember he was like, he, I don't think he was officially signed to Soldier Boy, but he was hanging with Soldier Boy, repping SODMG heavy. You know, he he had an iconic look to him, and he was like this mixture of Houston and Minnesota. Shout out Jody High Roller. No, Jody High Roller was super duper cool to me. 
I hear he's doing features for the low nowadays. So if I start rapping, I'm definitely hitting Riff Raff up. Riff Raff was definitely a part of my childhood. I remember, he, what was his album called? It was called like Neon Icon or something like that. I rock with Riff Raff. He gets to be an A, -Q a tier. Yo, we got the people's champ, Paul Wall, S tier. He, nobody can hate on Paul Wall. Paul Wall. He is the GOAT, right? He is the most... First off, he always had that like slim thug look to him. That was really cool. It was like him, Chameleon Air, was it? You know, whoever those mid-2000 Houston rappers were like... Oh, Mike Jones, obviously. He was a part of that Houston rapper clique, man. And between the grills, the look, like he fully embraced it. He was like the definition of Texas to a T. Of course, he had his own hits, you know, sitting sideways. Um, he had that song with Kanye, of course, legendary verse on still tipping, full, uh, still tipping. Come on, it's Paul Wall. Paul Wall is the damn goat. And even a couple of years ago, damn near 20 years after the height of Paul Wall's career, um, he got to be on a hit song again with that Mexican OT on um johnny dang man he got to drop a verse on that he was in the video bro paul wall you can't hate on paul wall paul wall is the damn goat all right next up mac miller another s tier rapper mac miller another super duper dope goat man big 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 i can't say enough rapper man i think in his peak he was somebody who could move over 100k first week. Rest in peace. I think the li was definitely a go. Um, you know, hip hop embraced him once again. He had the sales. If I I, I can't name all of his first week sales off the top of my head. I think towards his later years, when his music wasn't as commercial, he was moving like 50,000 units first week. Um, but I think at his peak, he was over 100,000 first week. Um, you know he had some he had some big songs he had that song with ariana grande he had a lot of his own music i remember macadelic that was an album i really liked he had a song on there with juicy j that was great and once again like he was of the culture people embraced him kendrick dissed him on uh whatever that song was again i'm blanking it's not a big on control he dissed him on control no mac miller was super dope Rest in peace, man. Long live Mac Miller. He gets to be an S tier rapper next to Eminem, Paul Wall, Mac Miller, man. Shout out Mac Miller. Next up, we got Jack Harlow, man. Jack Harlow, he gets to be an A tier rapper. He's not seasoned enough to be an S tier rapper, right? Jack Harlow, another rapper that I'm a huge fan of, right? Once again, sells really well. Hip hop embraces him because he's like a white rapper, but when he came out, he just wasn't corny. You know, he kind of had the Southern swagger to him. You know how to, he knew how to act. He didn't randomly say a bunch of, <laughs> he didn't randomly start saying a bunch of crazy stuff. You know, hip hop embraces him. I mean, him and ESTG is like a cool duo. I like Jack Carlo. Um, he's an A tier. And he, he has hits too, right? He's got a lot of hits. What pop, what's poppin'? He did solo, the song with Lil Nas X, First Class. Like, no, Jack Harlow, if you give me a couple of years, I'll put him as an S tier. But for now, he's an A tier. Jack Harlow was really, really dope. Now, I remember Jack Harlow, he had that like really cool trap sound, right? That he was riding for a long time. You know, I don't remember the album titles, but there was the album title... There was an album he had where it was like Route 66, Face of My City. It was like the trappy sounding Kentucky album. Then he followed it up with, it was supposed to be his Carter 3 moment, but he kind of dropped a very weak, what was that album called? Come Home's The Kids Miss You or something, but it was just too commercial and poppy and the tracks on it just weren't good. You know what I mean? But I think had he, you know, ah, man, if... If that album was good, he would have been an S tier white, right, white rapper right now. But then he's an A tier. 
um i don't know i remember he dropped loving on me and i thought he was gearing up for another album but we didn't get it but nah jack harlow i would say he's one good album away from being an s tier rapper but for now he's an a tier next up we have asher roth who this guy was a one-hit wonder you know he had that i love college song that party last night was awfully crazy you know that it was like late 2000 song right I remember I used to hear this song on the radio all the time, right? Let me just, you know, he just made a song about college partying. I'm not gonna lie. I went to college and when I went to college, college was nothing like that, that part that uh, I love college music video, right? Well, that's the thing. He had that I love college song and that was, you know, that was it. He's a C tier. He's not a D tier because he's not ultra corny. But the story I was told was kind of after that I Love College song that he actually just didn't want to rap and he didn't have any interest in it and he became a school teacher instead. Um, so yeah, BB No Money, I'm just going to put him B tier. Uh, pretty cool. I feel like he kind of overlaps with like Young Gravy a lot. I think they have like a couple songs together. They're pretty dope. I could rock with BB No Money. Um... Yeah, I, I really don't. I'm going to be blunt with y'all. Like, he's got decent music. Like, I feel like people embrace him. Like, he's cool. Like, I, I don't really, I can't think of much to say, you know? But he's accomplished. He's got some big records. He's got a cult fan base. He can tour really well. For that reason, I put him as a B tier. He's not an A tier. He's not an S tier. But he's not bad. So he gets to be a B tier. Next up, we got Lil Man J. And the thing is, I like Lil Man J. I respect his hustle. But I'm just going to put him as a D tier. Now, I don't know if you guys remember Lil Man J, but about two years ago, his come up was he was the quote unquote white rapper that sounded like Lil Baby. And I'll give him credit because he was good at imitating rappers. He did sound like Lil Baby. I think the song was called Cat Freestyle, right? And that was his come up. You know, he was just memeing around the internet. Um, sounding like Lil Baby and sounding like artists. Like he was, I think, and I think he his other thing was he tried to say 21 Savage stole a lyric from him or something, which wasn't true, but he was just, once again, he was just this kid that sounded like other rappers and was memeing around on the internet. Um, that, that's why I got to put him as a D tier. I don't think he had no real fan base, anything like that. All right, next up, we got M Matt Ox, man. Now, Maddox, uh, he's another, he's going to be another B tier artist, right? Once again, I don't know if you guys remember Maddox, but during that SoundCloud wave, he came up in that he was like, I think he was like 12 years old at the time and he was rapping really well. Um, he was like wearing the Bape shirt and whatnot. Like he had his own style and everything. His music has gravitated very far away from that, you know, but Maddox is dope. And another thing you got to give him credit for I'm not going to say he was the first, but I feel like he was one of the very early people to embrace that working on dying sound. I don't know if you know working on dying, and, but they're like a, a group of producers. Brandon Finessen is, I know, one of the biggest ones in that group. But Matt Ox was one of the first people to like really embrace them. So that's another reason why he has to be B tier. The reason he doesn't be, he's not an A tier, despite like how much I'm gassing him up. Because once again, he just really didn't see too much commercial success really outside of his first hit song. I feel like he had that song with X, you know, he's cool, um, but nah, he's just not a A or an S tier. He's a B tier, which I think is pretty good because he's also a lot younger than me. So he uh, he's uh, he's got like he's got time to like he's got time to bring himself up to an A tier and S tier. So, yeah, Lil White, Lil White is going to be an A tier. Now, Lil White, he was a Memphis rapper late uh, 2000s-ish. I can't remember if he was officially in 3-6 Mafia or he was 3-6 Mafia adjacent. I don't know. Lil White was just always really, really dope and authentic. Oh, I can't put him A tier. He's B tier. Lil White was always like dope and authentic to me. And I found out about him very, very late and went back to listen to him. But no, Lil White, Lil White is cool. He, he got that swag to him. He could really rap. 
He knows rap ain't just about bar, 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 bar. He's a B tier, but not for bars. Kid Rock is a D tier, and I put Kid Rock as a D tier because yes, he did see commercial success in the 90s, but the thing with Kid Rock was hip hop was cool to that man till it wasn't, right? You know, he, he, he was embracing it in the beginning, but five, six years later, he was done with that and basically never went back to it. Um, really, that's really all I got to say about Kid Rock. And I feel like when people look back at him, like when people look back at like 90s rappers, because he kind of abandoned hip hop, he's not even really in the conversation. All right, next up here, we have Cray Sean. Now, Cray Sean was another swaggy drip rapper. She was kind of in that same clique as V Nasty back in like 2012 ish with the streetwear and whatnot. But she had her own little piece of drama in that she released a song called Gucci Gucci. That was like her trendy song. And she got screwed over because she signed some deal where her album was only going to be sold at Hot Topic. And then the album flopped for one. She did not have that much of a fan base. And then two, you know, selling your album exclusively at certain places might work well for the retailer but really doesn't benefit the artist much so she i think they said she racked up a bunch of debt from that i don't remember what the actual story was um but yeah that was the case for cray sean i don't know she just wasn't as good as v nasty we're gonna put her as a c Lil peep <sighs> rest in peace Lil peep I don't know, Lil Peep, I'm going to put him as uh, Lil Peep A or S tier. I'm going to say A tier, but Lil Peep was really dope. Another SoundCloud artist. Um, I personally didn't really listen to his music like that. It was a little edgy for me, you know, but I can still acknowledge his input into the game because there's a lot of people who come up sounded like him. You know, he was a part of, he was like a German. I think he was German. I think, am I tripping? I want to say he was, but yeah, he kind of came up. He had his own original cloudy type of sound and he definitely had a cult fan base and everybody listens to. Shout out Lil Peep, man. He gets to be an A tier. All right, we got Logic. And I'm going to be honest with you, Logic, we all know he's biracial. But Logic gets to be on this list for the sake of the memes. For the sake of the memes. Logic gets to be an A tier, man. Logic really 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 dope rapper because yes he did that lyrical stuff rapping fast rubik's cube stuff but you know he knew how to make good music those bobby tarantino tapes bobby tarantino 2 especially classic i'll never forget when that mixtape dropped everybody in my high school just could not stop listening to it just state of emergency 44 more 44 more was such a good song that even the haters had to shut up and acknowledge logic was a beast man um just ever since he like quote unquote retired in like 2020 never really been the same like just really I, I'm, I'm gonna be blunt i feel like he's just been it maybe he likes making that type of music but i think he's been he's been releasing some pretty bad music you know and I think most Logic fans would agree that last couple of years musically have not been the best for them. All right, I ain't gonna lie. I'm getting tired of talking about all these white people. But next up, we got the Beastie Boys. Now, Beastie Boys, mid-80s, Rick Rubin, you know, they were early in the hip-hop thing, but they were like rap rock. They weren't really, really rapping like that, you know? And the, uh, musically, I'm, I'm going to be blunt. I never really liked their music like that. Um, granted, it was well before my time. I ain't that old. Um, but I, I'm going to be honest. I want to put them C. But just because of their the fact that they were pioneers, they get to be B tier. All right, next up, we have... I want to say this is Mac Lethal. All right, next up, we have Mac Lethal, man. This is somebody who once again came from the the battle rap kind of community um but he, when youtube was like first uh not not when they were early youtube 
he was kind of the first like rap hip hop people with a presence on the platform. He went ultra viral for a video. You can still look it up. It's a video of him rapping on the Chris Brown, look at me now beat. And he's like making a pancake while he does it. I don't know. He's got like really good technical skills, battle rap community. But once again, just minimal commercial success, to, at least to my knowledge. So that's why. I, and he just didn't really do anything like iconic, like a V nasty to where I would like rate him hot into a B or an A tier, you know? And for that reason, I'm gonna have to put you C tier, Mac, even though I do like you as a person. Machine Gun Kelly, Kells. Now Kells could be an A tier, but I have to put him B tier. Now let me tell you about, I've been listening to Machine Gun Kelly since the beginning. So when Machine Gun Kelly first came out, like 2010s, like laced up, I thought was really, really cool. I love like Wild Boy with Waka Flocka. That was a song I, I played nonstop. And that was like a pretty big hit, right? What I liked about Machine Gun Kelly at the time was if I can remember, he was he did have a lot of songs on that trap sound, and he was like really rapping, taking rapping seriously, and he was a really good rapper. He was good. And then even after that, I remember he had that song with Chief Keef. Uh, he embraced Doughboy really early, who was like another Ohio street artist that I was getting on. He was really, really cool for that reason. He had that song Trap Paris, I think, in like 2017. Machine Gun Kelly was good. You know, and then the Eminem thing happened, you know, and then he gravitated towards the whole punk rock thing that salute to him. I shit, I'm sure he was successful. You know, I'm like, obviously it's worked for him because that's kind of how he's kept his career alive. But for the sake of this list, you kind of got to deduct points for that, right? Because, you know, he went and he did that, you know, battle against Eminem, right? You know, he does the battle against Eminem. And now who won that battle? I think it's still debatable, right? One, yes, Killshot, you know, went crazy. But I don't really feel like Killshot was that great of a track. But Rap Devil, sonically, was a very, very, very good song that I actually still listen to sometimes to this day. But, you know, he challenged Eminem and put up a fight. But then he dropped this lack luster awful ep called the binge ep that didn't do him any favors and then after that he just pivoted to rock music but i feel like if he like really really held it down and tried his best and really tried to make it as a rapper i feel like he could have done it man but maybe the rock thing was something he wanted to pursue i don't know machine gun kelly just disappoints me because i actually did like him but he just went and did that rock thing, man. Come on, MGK. You would have been an S or an A tier. But because you did that, I got to put you as a B tier. Macklemore C. Macklemore, I'm a, I don't like Macklemore. I'm going to be honest with you. I always thought he was just super whack and corny. Like, that's really what it is. He was just whack and corny. Never liked any of his music back in the early 2010s. And then I, I will admit, I do feel bad for him because that Grammy thing happened where he won the Grammy over Kendrick Lamar. Because the Grammy, they, those people those people don't know what they're talking about. But that just like sealed the deal on like white privilege and all, all that type of stuff. And like, yeah, that kind of, I feel like his career was, I feel like winning that award uh, made his career not the same anymore. I don't know, Mac Miller, I might... The only reason I can't put him as a D tier, I feel like, was, I don't know, he did see some commercial success. I'll give him that, but no. Macklemore, nah. Hopefully, I didn't just say Mac Miller. Like, I don't know. I feel like I've just been talking about all these white people so much, I'm kind of getting tired of it. But we're getting this video done. But anyway, Macklemore, C tier. Next up, Andy Milanakis. Now, Andy Milanakis, um, I really liked him. I don't understand what, I don't remember what the disease is called, but I, I think he has like some sort of a disease that affects like his ability to kind of like go through puberty or something like that. I don't really remember. But he was a rapper who, he embraced the YouTube thing really early. Um, he was like 2011, 12, 13. He was like putting out popping music videos on YouTube. I remember he had those collabs with like Chief Keef really early on. Like, I don't know, Andy Milanakis, he's dope to me. We're going to put him as a B tier. I respect him.
insane clown posse we're gonna put them as they're also gonna be b tier man i rock with them i'm not gonna say i rock with them i really <laughs> what am i talking about? i rock with them i'll listen to them i've i've maybe given them like three four hours of my time in my entire life uh 90s rap crew they were cool that's i mean yeah i don't really know what y'all want me to say all right next up we got yellow wolf man shout out yellow yellow wolf i don't know yellow wolf i'm gonna be honest with he's signed to eminem but he was always just kind of corny to me he gets to be a c tier i don't got a lot to say all right we got nice peter and epic lord who if you don't know who those guys are i'll give you a hint epic rap battles of history that's what those guys were um i don't know they were funny and creative i guess their raps were cool i don't know like epic rap battles against the sea just based on the fact that it was clouded up it definitely wasn't embraced by hip-hop or nothing like that though if i can remember they did get snoop dogg in one of the videos um i don't know they're just like a youtube classic all right post malone post malone uh, i would put him in post malone What do I want to put Post Malone? Do I want to put... He's not an S tier. He's either an A or a B tier. Um, mm, we're going to put him... I'm going to be generous and I'm going to put him as an A tier, right? He blew up with White Iverson. You know, he had good music. You know, I remember he had a song called like Zach and Cody. You know, one of um, Beer Boggs and Bentley's rock star. Like post, Mo post Malone, mega star when it came to the hits. You know what I mean? The only thing is that it's like Post Malone, he deals with a lot of those vulturish comments that he doesn't really defend himself from. You know, like Post Malone, definitely a hit maker. Definitely could sell some albums. Post Malone was like a 500,000 first week sale rapper. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure he did that much. Definitely four, right? I'll look it up after. I don't remember off the top of my head. But Post Malone could sell some records. But yeah, no, nah, I think a lot of, because I think he got in a lot of trouble because he's like, oh, I'm just an artist that raps sometimes or some, I don't know. Uh, I'm running out of stuff to say about Post Malone. All right, this guy, this is Baby E. I don't even know why he's on this list. Um, we're going to put him as a D tier. His only redeemable factor was the fact that he was signed to Young Money. Um, and he has a song with Wayne. That's, he's a D tier. Russ is an A tier. Russ used to be very corny because I don't know if you remember, Russ used to like, his come up was like being an old head and like hating on new rappers. You know what I mean? But while he was a new rapper in his 20s himself, but he really redeemed himself. He gives a lot of game. He's really, really good musically. Um, You know, he can really rap. He's creative. Russ is pretty dope. So he gets to be an A tier because he redeemed himself after his cringy, 2016 ish era up church i don't know this is like some country rap type of shit <laughs> I've, I've, i ain't listen to that shit all right tay money she had this song called bussin um that was kind of her claim to fame that's really about it though therefore c tier young gravy a tier hilarious artist cult fan base raps about milfs good meme rapper not corny super dope good fan base i don't know what else to say a tier definitely a tier shout out young gravy young gravy is dope we got jelly roll man jelly roll very successful guy he, he's only a b tier because jelly roll embrace the country thing so the thing what i find is interesting is that jelly roll is like the opposite of like an mgk or like a kid rock in that jelly roll tried his hardest 
to make it as a rapper. Like you could tell this man loved rap music. He was in Memphis. You know, he was like three, six. I think he was like Lil White in that he was also three, six mafia adjacent. If I could remember correctly, or he, he had some connection to three, six, or maybe he did. I don't know. I, I remember him having some connection to three, six, but no jelly roll was really, really cool. But he tried his hardest to make it as a rapper doesn't see some success but then i think he dabbles in country music and blows up um but you know he still looks hip-hop with the face tattoos and everything like that yeah you know jelly roll he can uh, if he came up off rap he would be an a or an s tier he's very successful but he's a b tier for that reason shout out jelly roll uh the kid Leroy, man the kid Leroy, solid b tier um kind of like kind of like a rap pop ish but he's got some good songs that i really like he's got a song with g herbo that i like of course him and juice world were cool came up under lil bibby you know he got that style and swagger to him shout out australia he's a cool b tier all right next up we got token man token <sighs> he's the definition of white rapper raps really quickly eminem kind of fan base you know Token, I'm sorry, bro. You're a C tier, but I like, like you're decent. Uh, but even here, I haven't heard from Token a lot of time, you know? All right, Tom McDonald. This is a an ultra right wing rapper. Um, He's a D tier. He sucks. I don't really know what to say. 21 Pilots. Uh, These guys are like pop stars that rap sometimes. You know, funny story about 21 Pilots. I remember in like, when I was like, 18 years old i remember there was this girl i liked that i was talking to and we're just sitting down having a conversation the conversation dies and i remember i say something like oh so so do you listen to 21 i'm referring to 21 savage you know at this time i'm listening to uh uh what, what project was it the project with a lot um whatever that project was called. I am, I was, that was probably what I was listening to a lot. So I asked this girl like, oh, so do you listen to 21? She goes, oh, 21 pilots? I already knew there was, there was no chemistry there. There was no chemistry. There, there was nothing, that relationship, nothing was, nothing was gonna happen with that. All right, so for that reason, and 21 pilots, like, you you're gonna be a d tier i'm being critical iggy azalea man all right iggy azalea is gonna get a high score and people are gonna be mad at me iggy azalea is an a tier you want to know why for the longest time she was Nicki minaj's only competition right secondly she was signed to ti she was on hustle gang third she had like you know she had her she had some hit songs you know what i mean you can't say she didn't have hits like she had a like 2013 14 ish run and then like 2018 she had like i want to say like two different hits i remember tyga was one one of those hits that kind of like really helped her bring her career back but even that was kind of short-lived she's more so like a mom nowadays but iggy azalea she gonna be an a tier and i know that's gonna piss a lot of people off but whatever all right, next up, we got Vanilla Ice, 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 Baby. I'm going to be straight up. This He's an 80s rapper, right? That was 20 years before I existed, right? I don't... Vanilla Ice, you are going to be a... C tier. I, like, I mean, he was Ice, Ice, Baby. That was like, to my knowledge, that was his only hit. Um, like he's dummy wealthy nowadays, but all right, Weird Al, Weird Al gets to be a B tier. I don't know if you remember Weird Al, but Weird Al was like a, a comedy rapper of some sort back in the day that was like rapping and memeing, you know what I mean? Kind of like the same, he was kind of like on the Young Gravy type of come up, you know, but way before Young Gravy, like probably like eight, nine years before him, but now Weird Al. He was like a meme comedy come up rapper. I don't even know if he really still raps like that anymore. All right, we got Yeet. Yeet, Yeet gets to be an A tier. Yeet is popping. Yeet got songs with Drake. Yeet got his own original sound. 
Yeet's been trying to make it. Like Yeet didn't really make it to like 2021-ish, but he had been trying to make it since like, if I'm not mistaken, like 2016, he had like videos on Elevator and whatnot. Like Yeet, Yeet been putting in that work. Yeet gets to be an A tier rapper. Lastly, we got Young Lean. Young Lean, we're gonna put him as an S tier. You wanna know why? Cause Young Lean was the original cloud rapper. You know, he came up from Sweden. He was iconic. You know, he inspired a lot of people. He paved a way. Super dope. Rocks with like the Chief Keefs and the, all of those guys. Like SoundCloud. He was a pioneer. Young Lean gets to be an S tier. So that wraps up everybody on this. The only person I could think of that's not on this that I need to include is LP from Run the Jewels maybe like little debbie or something but once again if i missed anybody comment them our s tiers we got eminem paul wall mac miller and young aline for our a tiers we got Lil dicky slim jesus blp kosher the suicide boys g easy riff raff jack harlow Lil peep logic post malone russ um Young Gravy, Iggy Azalea, and Yeet. Our B tiers, we got R.A. the Rugged Man. We got uh, V Nasty. We got Andy Mineo, Millies, Action Bronson, Aesop Rock, The Lonely Island, uh, Bones, uh, NF, Hoodie Allen, BB No Money, Matt Ox, Lil White, The Su uh, the Beastie Boys, uh, Andy Milanakis, Machine Gun Kelly, Insane Clown Posse, Jelly Roll, The Kid Leroy, and uh weird al then for our c tier we got lush we got bubba sparks we got chris webby we got uh fergie we got um crispy cream froggy fresh we got uh asher roth we got Frey sean we got mac lethal we got uh macklemore we got yellow wolf we got epic rap battles we got tay money we got token and we got Vanilla Ice. Then D tier, we got Lil Mabu. We got uh, Chanel West Coast. Um, what was this kid's name? Cat Lil Man J. We got Kid Rock. We got Baby E. We got Ryan Upchurch. We got Tom McDonald. And then we got 21 Pilots. There we go. That is all of uh, the ultimate white rappers ranked list. If I missed anybody, let your boy know. It's your boy DJ T-Stomp. And I'm out. Peace.